The SSX series is one of those rare franchises in that all of the games fall into the range of above average to really, really great without having a complete stinker in its 12 year run. Matt, you made a video ages ago about SSX Tricky. A few years back, I wrote an article on the SSX reboot and still today, I like to play SSX 3. And I was thinking, why has there been no more games? Well, before we think about the future, let's check the past. Let's start in the year 2000. So stolen away from the Dreamcast and along with another Another missing in action franchise, Time Splitters, the first SSX was a launch title for the PS2. Not only did it launch the PS2, it also launched the now defunct EA Sports. <laughs> At its heart, it was a racing game, but the backbone of going fast was pulling tricks, and this secondary function went on to be the USP for future titles. All in all, a solid title with universal praise at the time, but noticeably without the flash and lunacy of what would follow. So it would be fair to say that it probably is the least well-remembered of the main series. Here's a quick fact, the dude who says PA4 was none other than legendary beatboxer Razel, who was also the commentator of sorts for yeah, just one year later, Tricky came out. And it would also be fair to say that this is the most remembered game, if only for the synonymous theme tune. This wasn't called SSX2, and that's reasonable, as most of the content was taken from the first game with added bells and whistles. What it did do is add the now mainstay of uber tricks. So you get your meter high enough and you do some mad shit. The game is quality, although once the nostalgia goals are removed, it does suffer from a few fairly janky controls and in some cases a fair bit of luck versus skill. Also for some reason, Macy Gray, Lucy Liu and Billy Zane did voices for it and if that isn't 2001, I don't know what is. So we jump two more years and we have SSX3 and in my humble opinion, the best game of the series. Key to this was an engine refresh and a move to a semi-open world. Instead of offering several runs on multiple mountains that you pick from a menu, SSX3 created one open mountain with three peaks. Trails were all connected with no load times once you got there, so you could actually run from the tippy top all the way to the bottom in one go. There's also collectibles and challenges on the way down. The music on the radio is A plus 10 out of 10 quality mate. It even had online play. It was the total package. It is still extremely playable today and running through an emulator such as I'm showing on the screen it can be made to look fantastic. Sales were good for SSX3 and rightly so but they wouldn't be like this again. Jump another two years on and continuing their history of not naming things correctly Next game, SSX On Tour. I had this on the GameCube over PS2 purely because you could be the Mario Brothers and Peach. Skiing was introduced in this game, a bit of a rubbish move. It's like putting rollerblading into Tony Hawk's. The game was fine, but it removed more than it put in. We were back to closed events picked from a list, stats linked to gear rather than characters, no online, you know, it goes on. As I said, the word to describe this game is fine. But if you had to pick a dud from the main series, maybe this was it. Jumping on again and EA have now given up on both Numbers and Sony, with SSX5 being called Blur and being released solely for the Wii. This is because they reckon what people wanted to do was draw the tricks in the air with the Wiimote and the nunchuck like a total dickhead. The game itself was technically good and we're back into the semi-open world of SSX3 and at least now the characters have shut up every time you do anything. It seems it was a bit of a cash grab, it didn't really work out and they kept skiing in. So, average. Jesus, these titles, mate. After five years hiatus, SSX6 was back, and of course, it was called SSX. It's on the 360 and the PS3, and it's okay. EA big as fucked off, and so is most of what we played back in 2000 to 2003. That's fine, things should move on, and most of the changes were in the right direction. New SSX was undeniably the prettiest of the bunch, and the one that certainly tried to add the most, if only in limited quantities. Reading back on what I wrote in 2012, which was a bit gushing, time has not been kind to this game and I don't actually agree with my original thoughts. It all feels a bit monster energy drink, you know, designed by a marketing team with buzzwords instead of the dudes who would actually be playing it if they didn't make it. Now, I don't begrudge the semi-forced online if you didn't have Xbox Live in 2012, were you really trying, you know? 
it's just the series ended on a fizzle rather than a bang. I don't know. If I had the choice of playing SSX Tricky or the new SSX right now, it's not even a debate. So what does the future hold? Well, as much as I'd like to hint or tease or have some uncovered information, basically there is nothing substantiated. As you may have noticed from the sales graphic in the background, plain and simple, EA saw that the most recent SSX games sold less copies than the earliest games. And this is while undoubtedly costing more to make. They also had some rocky times for a few years and so consolidated their output to franchises that were known money makers like your FIFAs, while taking less gambles on the unknown. The last game was furthest removed from what people remember, that being, you know, the wackiness and the unreality. So is this the end? You know, probably. Stick with Steep if you must, you know, I'm not.